The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 16th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a mixed bag out there. The mix is going like this. you got the Russell off about five points, a quarter of a percent. Four tenths for the trannies. They're down 61 points. The Dow is up 122, three tenths. Three tenths for the S&P are 16 points. Four tenths for the NASDAQ 100. That's a 69-point move. And the semis are up 29 points as well. If you've got gold trading down 15 bucks at 23.79, we'll silver up two pennies at 29.75. Lights Recruit is up 57 cents. Uh, natural Gas is up 10 cents. It's in a break out mode for sure and the 30-year treasury is up four pennies four ticks i should say printed out 11807 our leader in the clubhouse to the upside it's costco wholesale up about 14 bucks less than two percent msci inc up 14 uh, bucks about three percent chubb limited up nine dollars nearly four percent and biddy about nine about one percent humana up eight two and three tenths percent for it to the downside the shakers micro strategy 40 bucks two percent nice limited adr down 28 bucks 12 percent Martin Marietta is off 24. That's a 4% move. United Rentals is down 18, 2.5%. Coinbase is off 12, about a 6% move to the downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers. But where are we going to begin? I'll tell you where we're going to begin. We're going to begin by taking a look at this is a this is interesting. We are in a day where we are either going to see uh, tops of, for all kinds of instruments out there, or we're going to see these topping patterns fail, and that's going to suggest a strong momentum move to the upside. Now, when I say these instruments, I don't even know that I've got all of them, but I've got most of the majority of the things that you and I take a look at each day. The top portion are the futures contracts. What you see out there, for example, you've got the ES, the NQ, the Dow, gold contracts, silver, and you've got high-grade copper. What you'll see is you'll see uh, bars 9 or bar 8. Bar 8 means that bar 9 would complete today. If it shows bar nine, it says the bar following bar nine is going to complete. I don't know what's going on with my uh, Dow chart out there, but for some reason it doesn't put the uh, star up there. The star tells us that it's a confirmed pattern, meaning the high is taking place either on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. We don't have any bar following nines out here as we speak right now. Now, you should take a snapshot of this picture. Why? Because sometimes people ask, well, where's support? In fact, Ronan asked, where's support with regard to gold? Well, Ronan, we'll take a look at those charts here because you wrote in about it. But if you take a look at, and you're going to ask me, where's the first level of support on a pullback? Well, first thing you take a look at would be its TD9 count it's oscillator and change line. 
That's the first place to go with regard to gold, and that shows 2379.60 or thereabouts. That number's going to change. For asking me where's profile support, 2317 and change. And if you're asking where's uh, where did gold last break out from, that'd be at 2321. Now that's in the. I'll I'll tell you what I'll do this here. I'll put put the line under silver, and it's all the numbers above that. Uh, above that um, a gray area out there. So uh, here, that's just that's just the equity future contract. How about the ETF? You got the SPY, and it's equated ETF. You got the Qs, and it's equated. The Dow, and it's equated ETF. You've got the technology sector, the financial sector, the communications sector. You've got the uh, semiconductors via the SMH. It's got a totally different set of holdings than the SOX does. So you got to take a look at those two separate. And then the GDX as well. Now, you'll see those have bar you'll see those are in bar number eight out there. That means today's close has to be above a certain level out there in order for the pattern to come to fruition. And then we take away the cash indices, you got the SP Dow, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, and the XAU. Well, that makes sense. You've got the GDX in bar number eight, you got the XAU in bar number eight as well. So that's what's going on just as an overview. We have we don't have this too often that occurs out here, but we certainly do now. So now let's go simply, let's close out this uh, chart here because it hogs up a ton of resources and let's actually go take a look at some of the charts and see what the patterns are well let's go ahead and let's stay here here are the etfs or some of the etfs out there so you got the dow diamonds if you ask me you can see we're in the bar following bar number nine today Where's support? Well, the first level of support in the Dow Diamonds on a retracement is going to be about 390 to 74. I have to say about because that's the oscillator and change line, and that changes as price moves up and down. Now, whatever today's high is, if tomorrow we close above that high, whatever that is at the end of the day here, and we close above it tomorrow, the pattern will have been negated and tells us about a strong upward momentum move inside of the Dow Diamonds. The spies would have that same message, but right now, where price should pull back to is that oscillator and change line around 520. 76 in the queues it's around 442 now the cool thing about the queues is the oscillator and change line and the top of its daily profile are in line with each other so that would be an area of support we take a look at the technology sector now when i provided this data to you there could be new profiles that form today there could be new profiles that form tomorrow and if those profiles form above wherever the oscillator and change line is then that would become the first level of support in the xlk we can see that's not the case its area of potential support or target to the downside would be around 206. The XLF is going to go ahead and form bar or is likely going to form bar number nine today unless we see some kind of wicked pullback. That says its top is either today or tomorrow, utilizing this tool out there. And with regard to the communications sector, we're in the bar following bar number nine. Now, here you can see that price is trading just slightly above profile levels out there. So if it closes above the top of its profile, this is the XLC, then that first pullback level is going to be 82.46. The second area would be about 82.08. The third one, 81.36. And around 81.61 is where that oscillator and change line is. The real estate sector completed a TD9 count top yesterday, and the price closed above its high. That high out there is 38.95, we're at 38.97 right now. That pattern gets negated and says we had higher. Now, you'd like to take a look at the weekly time frame chart just simply to understand what's going on there. I don't have that at this moment. And here you can see the SMHs. Bar number nine is going to go ahead and likely confirm today. Uh, but again, that high may not take place until tomorrow. So that's what's going on. We take a look at those ETFs that are forming the uh, TD9 counts out there. Let's, uh, as we go to a break here, let me just put up the charts for the daily equity future contracts. Uh, that's not it, but we'll get to it. Daily equity future contract. So here we take a look at potential targets. 5240 on the ES, 18255 on the NQ, 39364 inside the Dow, and the Russell 2000 needs a bearish reversal candle to form a top. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. 
While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Yes, Mr. Bill, there are tons of TD9 counts out there. I didn't even do a uh, run on instruments, let's say, with inside the NDX or the S&P or what have you. So, I mean, there are tons of TD9 count patterns. question is, are they going to take hold? Now, none of us should be surprised if we start to see the market uh, pull back uh, come tomorrow out there. Now, in the case of uh, now I've got the actual indices, some of the cash indices up on our screen. So, you see the Dow completes its TD9 count top today. Its price target to the downside would be about 39,260. Yes. S&P completes its pattern. 52.20 would be that level. The NDX 100, 18.174 would be a target. We've already got a completed TD9 count top on the transports. That has taken hold and price is likely targeting the 15.395 level. New York Stock Exchange, it's up. Now, it's going to complete the pattern. It's going to confirm the pattern today, complete the pattern tomorrow. But it's still downside target would be around the 18.133 level. The DAX here. Uh, is going to, so the DAX closes in what, uh, about 11 minutes, I believe. So the DAX needs a close above. Uh, 18.772, and we're at 18.725. Uh, so it doesn't look like the DAX is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count uh, bottom here uh, at 11. I believe it closes at 11.30, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken, and if I am, my apology. But at this stage here, it doesn't look like it's going to confirm a TD9 count. It doesn't need to. Why? Because right now we've got is a uh, bearish dark cloud cover candle, and that'll confirm a roads meant to indicator top. So even in the DAX in Germany. Now, the FTSE chart is not live. Unfortunately, the data feed that I need for the FTSE would require me to turn the data feed off that uh, is um, populating a lot of these instruments out here. Today is going to go ahead and confirm inside the FTSE a TD9 count top there. So we're looking at uh, we don't have that in the case of the Shanghai 
or the Hang Seng or the Nikkei out there, but certainly with regard to Europe, the European markets right now, they're dancing along the same steps here as the U.S. markets. And there's the XAU, which uh, is uh, going to confirm a TD9 count top today as long as the XAU is able to close above, and right now it's trading above it, 142.24 out there, 143.81. Um, and then finally, and we talked about that on the uh, on the larger view chart that I provided uh, to us at the opening. If we take a look at what's going on inside the metals market for both gold, silver, and high-grade copper. So if we take a look at gold, today is going to become a TD9 count as long as price is able to close today. So this is for you, Ronan. First thing with regard to today's close is gold must close above 23.75. Uh, right now, we've seen a pullback that's found support at that oscillator and change line. So maybe that's a likely outcome. I don't know. But we need to take a look at that. If uh, gold, And so then you'd have a TD9 count that would form today, could form today, complete tomorrow. That's an important thing out there. So it doesn't mean that the pattern has completed, especially with price pulling back and testing the uh, oscillator and change line. So you got a rising price oscillator above zero. That's a bullish condition out there. But you were asking, where's the first level of support in gold? Well, it's there. It's at that oscillator and change line at 2380. So not until price gets below that would we get something other than a neutral signal out there. And if price were to close below that, we're looking to move to 2343, 2317 as an example. In the case of silver, it's going to form bar number nine today. It would need a substantial pullback for that not to happen. So let's not even spend time taking a look at those numbers out there. Uh, but its retracement area should be about 2889 uh, or thereabouts. Tomorrow would be the day when both gold and silver would complete their TD9 counts. That is not the case with regard to high-grade copper. Well, I guess it could be. Today's bar number nine of high-grade copper. But today's also looks like it's going to be a, uh, a bear sash candle or likely to be a bear sash candle. That's going to confirm also a roadmap indicator top. So support with regard to high-grade copper. It's a July contract, $4.80 out there. And if price were to close below that, we'd see a move back towards $4.63 out there. So that kind of covers the bigger picture with regard to what the markets are doing. Um, so there's topping patterns all over the place. The question is, will they take hold? Why would we even be asking the question, will they take hold? Well, I think that's a good question. I didn't have it prepared. I asked that uh, myself out there, but I'm thinking somebody might ask that question. So how am I going to answer that? I'm going to answer that by pulling up this chart here. I don't know what's going to be populated behind it. Please be something like the S&P. Well, that's the NDX 100. Uh, that's fine. So um, so it's, it really helps to answer that same question with regard to are these tops going to hold or not? So you can see the NDX. That's on your left-hand side chart. Right now, that's a daily time frame. We've already covered the daily TD9 count. But look at what the weekly chart is doing out here. And so here's the deal. And the deal is this. If price closes the week, that's tomorrow, the NDX 100 closes above 18, 416, 73. 18, 416, 73. If price closes above that tomorrow, its TD9 count, its road momentum indicator top gets negated for its weekly time frame. We're too early into the month. It's only the 16th, but right now we can see that price is trading above its roads momentum indicator top. And that uh, requires, in order to negate that pattern, it requires a monthly close above 18, 464, 70 out there. So tomorrow is going to be a really important day out here. One, because you got the daily TD9 counts, price should be pulling back. The question is on the NDX 100, does it negate its uh, weekly topping pattern out there? And we won't have to stop there. I think we can see that same exact pattern here inside the S&P 500. So we'll go ahead and populate those charts as well. And that's why it's a little iffy as to whether or not uh, we're going to see a top. Now, we got the patterns out here, but the interesting, look, look at the weekly chart now for the S&P 500. It must close below 52.64, um, you know, we're at 53.18. So what is that? Uh, 60, it's about 80 points, 70 some odd points uh, that it would need to the uh, downside. So that's what it needs to close below tomorrow to negate its signal. You can see on the monthly time frame chart the same kind of pattern that is out there. So, well, look, weekly and monthly, they're still going against resistance. But right now, they're trading above resistance out there. Uh, so we really need to see how tomorrow uh, ends before we know that uh, answer to that question. Now, here's the thing. We may still see an up week tomorrow. I'm not saying that we're going to give back all of the week's gains out here. We are in bar number four of consecutive moves higher inside the S&P 500. 
Um, look, in this rally that we've seen to the upside, we've gotten way beyond uh, bar number four out there. But typically on bar number four, you start to see a pullback, just like we did back here in August of uh, 2020. Was that <laughs> It's a weekly chart. Was that 2022 out there? You got to go back away. So, um, so that's what's going on with regard to the cash indices out here. And I've taken up nearly half of the show just to kind of give you a review of the uh, markets out there. So now it's time for me to get to a couple requests, and I'm getting behind on the requests. That's for sure. So let's take a look at natural gas this is for um this came in yesterday from joe it came in uh, i didn't see it until after the show he is in boil well this is the beautiful thing now i, I hope that this uh, stay inside of boil hopefully you're still inside of boil you got a td9 count top that formed yesterday and then the patterns here's the thing the patterns don't always work they're great signals we've seen enough times it's more than a coin flip uh for uh, the topping or bottoming pattern to work out there but we take a look at natural gas it is negating that td9 count top now if it days end price closes more the july contract by the way july contract is 100 percent of the holdings inside of oil if price were to close back below 2.637 at days end well then that td9 count top is in place otherwise you've got a big breakout mode going where's the next price target for natural gas joe I'd say it's up at two dollars and ninety cents. That's the monthly oscillator on change line. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at oil for Joe and the past AEM gold contract. Rick. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. 
They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Back up, folks. So uh, we're taking a look at Boyle here. This is, uh, again, for Joe uh, inside the uh, – uh, no, that was an email that was sent uh, yesterday. And so, Joe, I'll give you a price target inside of Boyle, but, but really it's irrelevant. You've got to be making your decisions on the July contract and keep looking at Boyle just to make sure what uh, future contracts are in there. That's what you've got to make your decisions on. I was able to at least provide you with what the next upside target is inside of natural gas as well as on the downside. You know, if price were to close below uh, yesterday's high, that would uh, still then keep a TD9 count pattern in place out here. So with regard to where might be Boyle headed to? A target would be 2266. That is a TD9 count breakdown level that was uh, formed back on February the 5th out there. I am not saying that's where it's headed to. I'm saying that could be a price target out there. You've got to be paying attention to the July natural gas future contract. Why? Because you could get uh, it hit its price target overnight, and then Boyle would never even seen. Uh, and, you know that that uh, that that price target out, but you are in a full breakout mode that needs to be confirmed at day's end out there. But right now, as we speak, you're in a full breakout mode, and best of luck to you on that trade. Uh, Alton wanted to take a look at a Pan American Silver out there, PAAS out there. Uh, thank goodness it's PAAS because otherwise, you know, Stevie, yeah, I won't go there. But if we take a look at Pan American Silver out there, it has a TD9 count top that will form today as long as price closes above 2035. And we're at 2060 right now. I don't know where today will close, but if it does, you will have a TD9 count top, the pattern which will complete tomorrow. But it will be a confirmed top out there. Now, price is sitting at support as we speak, Alton, and that is at 2051. That's that green oscillator and change line out there. So even if we get a top, in order to get any kind of downside traction, you've got to close below that. And if we do close below that, well, then I'd have to say that the next target would be its swing point low. And that's from the day of April the 22nd out there. That's down at 1801. If price were to close below that, below that, then 1639 at this moment in time would be the next support level. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, it has a completed TD9 count top. The only way that gets negated is a close above uh, last week's high. Last week's high is 2090 come tomorrow. Uh, you'd love to see that out there if you're a bull, but otherwise you're going to have a TD9 count top on the daily, a TD9 count top on the weekly, uh, the monthly chart. You're just consolidating with inside its daily profiles out there. So we're asking for support and resistance. And on the weekly chart, that support is down at 1764. So hope that helps you out and best of luck to you on that trade. Ronan wanted to take a look at a Nico Eagle. So we'll do that as well as Goldilocks out there. And again, was just we've already covered, I think, a lot of that. But we'll go ahead and throw the charts up there for Goldilocks. So AEM, right, we took a look at the GDX and the XAU. So it's not surprising to any of us that we open up these charts and we see that they've got TD9 counts out here. So we take a look at AEM. A TD9 count pattern will form today as long as price on the daily chart, as long as price closes above 68.40. We're at 68.79. So if we close above that, you'll have a TD9 count top that confirms. will complete tomorrow. And here we have price below that oscillator and change line. So it's telling us that it's losing this momentum. But I don't know where it's going to close the day out. If it does form a TD9 count top today, it remains below that green oscillator and change line. Look, the pattern still can will complete tomorrow. But that would suggest to us that price would take a move back to the 6530 level now when we take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here the weekly time frame chart negated its td9 count top yes uh, last week out there so on a weekly basis this says that this wants to continue to move higher just as the monthly chart tells us the monthly chart is in bar number seven a bearish reversal candle on either the weekly or the monthly would in fact confirm a sell the D point top, but we don't have that as we speak right now. So the daily is saying, the weekly says I want higher price, the monthly says I want a higher price, but we may be getting a timeout signal with regard to AEM. So hope that helps you out. Oh, let's go take a look at those gold charts, by the way. Let's actually, we're going to have to populate them uh, because it's probably the ES that's out there. Yeah. So let me, uh, let's do this here. Let's go populate the uh, gold charts. This way we can see what's also going on on those intraday time periods. It's going to take a moment or two. 
uh, for this to populate, um, but that's okay. And uh, you were also looking for support, which I think we covered on the daily time frame for that TD9 cut top, which was right now it's at Oscillator and Change Line, and then below that would be the 2343 to 2317 area. But just out of curiosity, are we seeing any kind of breakdown signals with regard to gold for its other time frame, its other uh, intraday time periods? And we're looking at that 90-minute chart, see what populates here. I'm going to actually open it up here momentarily as soon as it populates. Probably, there we go. It should be populated. So is there an A to B equals CD pattern? That's what Stevie wants to see out here. Yeah, there most certainly is. But look, you've got a TD9 count top. So it's got the top that's in place out here in the five-hour time frame. What you're watching for here, see how price has pulled back, and so far it's found support at that green oscillator and change line, it being 23.84. If price can remain above 23.84, the five-hour signal is neutral. If price closes below that, momentum is lost and price should pull back to support, which would be between 23.61 and 23.66. And that's what you're looking for is where is price going to likely pull back to. Wave number seven pattern inside the two-hour time frame chart. It's inside a bearish structured profile. If you get two consecutive closes below 23.80.90, uh, then that suggests to move to either the 23.51 to 23.61 level out there. The 60-minute time frame chart for gold has a Rhodesman to indicator top Trading below profile, don't have any signal. It's the 30-minute chart that's got the TD9 count bottom. There we go. So now when we circle back 30, 15, and 10, we can see those bottom patterns out there. So here's really the one to be watching, Ronan, uh, throughout the day, I would say. We've seen a nice TD9 count bottom pattern that went in and confirmed at 11 o'clock. That then next half hour bar that really completed the pattern, if you will, if price had gone lower, and it went ahead and rallied right up into the oscillator and change line. So price right now is sitting at a resistance level. Price can clear this area. This area is at about 2385 and change out there. Let's just call it 2386. If price can clear 2386, 2391 will be the next price target. If it can do that, then it gets back to the recent highs from back at about 930 last evening out there. So that's likewise, though. If price closes below the low of this TD9 count on a 30 minute basis, 2375, 20. Ronan, that would be telling us that gold should pull back to the 2358 level. So that's gold for you. That should cover all of the aspects that you were looking for. At least I hope that it does. If not, please let me know, and we'll figure out what information we forgot to look at. So our next request is to take a look at BY. No, that was AEM. So we did that already. Uh, let's go this one right here. So it is BYDDY, BYD Company Limited. Another China, I think, EV company. Look, all that I can provide to you, uh, GTE, prices trading below profile support on the daily time frame. The next level of support is 51.30 on a weekly time frame. I don't have any kind of a, uh, of a uh, top. Support is at 55.46 out there. Resistance on this instrument is at 59.15 or thereabouts. Uh, that is the monthly oscillator unchanged line. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We get back from this break. We're going to take a look at Hecla. We're going to look at the dance steps for Mr. Bill for the ES and New York Stock Exchange and anything else that you'd like to take a look at. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, welcome back, uh, folks. The individual who uh, continues to uh, send in requests for these uh, Chinese uh, ETFs and uh, um, uh, uh, EV companies out there. I had also asked about the Hang Seng, as well as a trend line inside of uh, BDD, BYDDY. So I'm going to put that up on my screen. So with regard to trend lines, the question was, uh, is the rally going to stop when it hits the uh, trend line? And this is the Hang Seng. So I put the uh, monthly, the weekly chart up on the screen out here. And I think you're looking at a much different trend line than the one that I would use. So if you just simply come all the way back to its highs, this is the Hang Seng from back in 2021. That basically is your first touch point. Your next touch point out here is going to be in January of 2023. Price already broken through that trend line. And we've got the same thing with regard to BYDDY. Let's put that up here as well. Again, just take a look at that. Um, a weekly time frame chart. Well, geez, it went away. Why did it do that? Let's take a look at its. Uh, so here, let me get that trend line out because now it doesn't show that. But here's the trend line. So again, I'd come back to the 2022 highs out there. That's going to be your first touch point with regard to this instrument. And then, uh, so it has not hit the uh, trend line uh, to the upside out there. What's going to happen? I, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know what to tell you on this. You know, on a, on a weekly basis, this does about 1.3 million shares on average. On a daily basis, this is doing about 433,000. So it's liquid, but it's not the most liquid uh, instrument that is out there. So you just pay attention to the patterns, which are nearly impossible. I would say if you're really going to trade these, please get access to the Chinese market and take a look at what's going on and take a look at the patterns there. That way you get rid of all of these currency conversions out here. And that would really be the best way to take a look at those, um, to take a look at most international stocks uh, for sure. So hopefully that helps you out with regard to the trend lines. Uh, what is it going to do when it gets there? Well, first the Hang Seng, it's already beyond that trend line. All right, let's Let's go back to the uh, white background charts and take a look at Hecla. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. So if you give me a moment, we'll get over to those screens. Now, this is Tesla. That's not where we're going to start. We're going to start here with Hecla. But where did Stevie put it? Did I put it there? I did not. I think I put it right here. It is. Perfect. So now we take a look at Hecla. So Hecla does not have any kind of... Um, 
topping signal, at least not just yet out there. It looks more like what Hecla wants to do is form an A to B equals CD pattern on the upside. Let's take a look at the swing point that it would need to cross above would be for May the 10th out there. Now, that swing has volume of 11.2 million shares. What did we do yesterday as price moved up into it? We did 13 million shares. You know what that tells us, Dan, is that price, in the case of Hecla, price should at least go target that swing point high. And that swing point high is 568. Now, today's volume is about 4 million shares, two hours of trading. So that's about 12 million, you know, straight line math. So similar or more volume than that swing point for May the 10th. So this is telling you and I that what its intent is is to uh, generate an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. Now, your preference is for this not to get above that high today or tomorrow. Why? Because if it ticks above that high today, then you're going to get a confirmed TD9 count pattern out there. And if it ticks above it tomorrow, well, you'll get a confirmed TD9 count pattern tomorrow also. So you want, you'd love for this to rally a little bit, but you don't want to see this thing tick above 568. If you do, then you're going to get a topping signal. That would at least suggest a retracement back to its oscillator and change line, which is currently printed at 539 out there. That's what the daily time frame chart is communicating to us. The weekly time frame chart, what do we have here? So the weekly is trading into a swing point that could be generating a very large A to B equals CD pattern on the upside. That's the swing point from April 12th. The volume there was 63 million shares. Last week, we moved into it with 56 million shares. And this week, it's Thursday, we are at 34. Well, so it's moving in on a weekly basis with pretty light volume, very light volume. So it doesn't look like the weekly is setting up for an A to B equals CD pattern. The monthly chart shows resistance at $6.31 out there. Uh, that's the top of its uh, bullish structured monthly profile. So that seems like a pretty good target out there. It still looks to me, the daily is saying it wants to push higher out there. The weekly says, uh, really, that's what you want to do? I'm going to have to go with, yeah, that's what the daily is telling us. Uh, so uh, so I think you've got uh, you've got my review of it. And hopefully it stays. It doesn't create a TD9 count top so that it continues on that path out there. And uh, we're on the exact same page. Well, that's a beautiful thing. I like that when we're on the same page. Mr. Bill wanted to do the Texas two-step and take a look at how the ES Mini and what uh, signals were, I believe, was the daily and the uh, uh, weekly time frame. So we'll put up the ES Mini. And on the ES Mini chart, what we have out here, we are in going to, on a daily basis, we're going to be in bar number three to the upside. So let's open up the daily time frame chart out here. And I know I've heard people say we've been up for 10, 11, 12 days or what have you, not consecutively with higher highs out there. And so, you know, my pattern just continues to. Now, look, we have we, we can see that since the low out here on a daily basis, the most recent low of April the 19th, we've only had one two bar pullback out there. So very strong upward momentum move. When we take a look at that ES mini. We do know that it should be getting tired because it's been running the sprint and it's going to form a TD9 count top today. This chart is not going to show us that on a weekly basis. And we take what the ES Mini is doing out here. We're going to be in bar number four to the upside, assuming that we close above uh, last week's high, which just seems like a pretty decent outcome out there. It had its three-day, its three-bar pullback. That was the uh, low that took place in April out there. So we should be getting ready for a retracement as well. I say should, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Now, you also want to take a look at this for the New York Stock Exchange. So let's get that up on our screen out here. Where's the index right here? And let's see what uh, what uh, dance signals this shows for us. Just takes a moment here to uh, populate. Weekly is in bar number four, so very much like the ES mini out there. The daily is only in bar number three to the upside. So the New York Stock Exchange had seven consecutive higher closes in a row out there. It's, you know, when you get that, that's well, in any event, it had seven consecutive lower closes, too. But all we did was we just moved lower for one day, and now we're back up to the upside. But you are in bar number three to the upside. So, yeah, you could you could say the dance steps could be getting a little bit uh, tired out there. Typically, it's two to four bars to the upside uh, before you start to or downside before you see some type of counter trend move. That's usually for the same period of time, two to four bars out there. So uh, that's what I see, uh, Mr. Bill. I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for for both the ES Mini and the uh, New York Stock Exchange. And uh, thanks much for those requests out there. Hector and Patty want to take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns for uh, WPM. 
So where does Stevie put that? Here we go. So and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get those charts on my black background screens, Hector and Patty, because that's where we can draw the A to B equals C D patterns. But just for the heck of it. I want to see what are the chart patterns out here. So WPM, that is Wheat and Precious Metals, has a Rosemont indicator top. Now, price is trading about 55.92 with green oscillator and change line. Even though it's got a top, and as long as price remains above that, its signal is neutral. Support is held. TD9 count top in uh, Wheat and Precious Metals is going to complete this week out here. And that suggests price should pull back. The monthly chart doesn't show any kind of resistance at all. Uh, it continues to want to suggest that it wants to trade higher. Maybe we're just looking at a short-term pullback out there. That I don't know. But that is a real possibility. When we come back to these breaks, though, we're going to go take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns. That way you can keep these charts. It's Rosemont to Indicator Top of the Daily, the TD9 Count in the Weekly, just in the back of your mind. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're on the uh, charts here for Wheat and Precious Metals. Uh, this is for Hector and Patty. They wanted me to be able to draw in the A to B equals CD patterns out here. So Hector and, Hector and Patty, on a daily time frame, the A point would be the low from February 26th. The B point out here would be the high from uh, September 13th. I'm sorry, March 13th, and it pulls back. It creates a 0 .382 retracement. It's 37.96. That's close enough for me. And that was on March the 20th. Now, it's had several sell the D point signals that have uh, popped up along the way out there. So, you know, what I would then do is come back 
back and really take a look at the weekly chart. What's the A to B equals CD pattern on the weekly time frame? And for that, that's much easier to draw. Now, I don't know if it's confirmed, but we'll go ahead and I say confirmed. I mean, with volume, the pattern is in play. That's for sure, regardless. But let's take a look at it. So uh, here's the A to B equals CD that we're drawing in here. It's going to give you a price projection, an initial price projection of 62.51. Uh, the B point out here at volume of 11 million shares. When it was passed was with uh, nine, then uh, eight, then last week was uh, seven. So it doesn't have a confirmation from a volume, st volume standpoint. Doesn't mean it's not going to go target that 62.51 level out there. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, let's go on to our next request, which was from Nicholas. His question is, let's switch back to the other set of charts out here. He'd like to go short. Tesla is asking, is now the time to do that? So let's go take a look at what the Tesla charts are communicating uh, to us. Um, is that right here? Tesla. So now we take a look at that Tesla out here is now a good time to short. You've got a weekly by the D point pattern. The price above that oscillator and change line. The monthly bottom of its profile has held at 144.38. And on a daily time frame, you've got a bottom, you've got a road momentum indicator bottom pattern. I'm going to go with no. Now is not the time to go ahead and uh, short uh, Tesla. Nothing is broken down. You just got a normal retracement at this stage of the game. It may be setting up an A to B pat, A to B equals CD pattern uh, to the upside. And lastly, let's take a look at AMD for Mimi. Uh, Mimi, AMD on a daily time frame is an A to B equals CD to the upside. Just watch for a bearish reversal candle. As far as support, it's 161.62. And what you're looking for at AMD is a close tomorrow about 164.45. If it does that, it says that this move is more than a counter trend move and price should go target 174.92 folks thanks for all your contributions today have a terrific thursday i'll look forward to seeing you again 11 a.m sharp on fabulous fantastic friday take care